my fellow gods and goddesses, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today we are going to be talking about my most anticipated releases of the second half of 2019. Hopefully I actually do actively read these books when they come out. We'll see. I'm trash as we've established as we know this isn't a surprise to anybody and I also know that as soon as I get done filming this video I'm going to find like 20 more books that come out this year that I missed so let's just ignore it it's fine we're here we're ready I have a list so let's just get into it so the first book I'm going to talk about is a book that I have actually already read it is my favorite new release of the year so far and that is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig I cannot wait until this book comes out because you guys will never hear me talk about another book again I cannot wait to shove this down your throat and make you choke on its excellency. So let's just talk about it. House of Sound Sorrows, first of all, it comes out on August 6th, so we're going to be doing this chronologically. And this is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling that involves a murder mystery, ghosts, hauntings, a sea island aesthetic, a Greyjoy-esque aesthetic that is less crusty and filled with beautiful sisters that just dance all the time and have gorgeous dresses and it's just, even if you're not a fairy tale retelling kind of bitch, this is so amazing. It has the elements of the original fairy tale, but there's so much extra original story in here that just has you completely immersed and intrigued and you just can't put it down. And I cannot wait for this to come out and for everybody to read this book. I will be doing a Judge of Book Bites cover on this book, so I'm not going to say anything more about it look out for that in august because again this is amazing the next anticipated release is actually a sequel to a book that i read in may and that is a demon world by sally green this is the sequel to the smoke thieves which is a game of thrones-esque world like a political fantasy that has to do with demon smoke and a wide cast of characters if you guys want to learn more about the smoke thieves just check out my may wrap up i will link that up above but basically the demon world is just it you know it carries on from the smoke thieves and obviously i can't tell you what it's about because it's gonna spoil it so yes just know i want to read it and i'll hopefully read it when it comes out next book i have listed is beasts of frozen sun by jill chriswell this uh from what i can see from the synopsis has something to do with god so we know i added that shit to my tbr stat uh it from the synopsis it's it seems like the girl has godlike powers where she can like manipulate people's thoughts can tr see their like true essence at like the touch of their hand something like that so i'm all for it it seems to be a very like politically driven book as well with war and stuff but quite frankly as soon as i see the word god in a synopsis i immediately add it to my tbr but it's really that simple to get me to read your book. The next book I have listed is The Spinner Dreams by K.A. Reynolds. This is a middle grade fairy tale-esque story. I'm not sure if it's like a direct retelling of any fairy tales, but it seems to just be a um, middle grade fairy tale-esque story. And apparently it deals a lot with like mental health and all that kind of stuff. And I, again, love fairy tale retellings as we just saw so I'm really excited for this the cover looks absolutely adorable I love the art of it and again I'm just I really love fairy tale retellings and I just read 
Darkwood recently, which is another middle grade retelling fairy tale esque story. So I really hope this has kind of similar vibes to it. And I'm ready. I'm ready to find out. I'm ready to read it. Next one I have is probably one of my top anticipated releases of the second half of the year, and that is Crown of Coral and Pearl by Mara Rutherford. So as we know, I love ocean aesthetics in books. Aside from gods, if you have a book that has anything to do with the ocean, anything to do with like an island set setting, or just anything to do with the sea, I am so on board with it. And that is going to be, again, another theme in this video. So I, again, I don't know too much about this book because quite frankly, I don't really want to know a ton about it. I just know that this has something to do, again, a very political royalty setting book. I really love those kinds of themes in my books as well and from what I understand it has something to do with this print like these princes of this land they pick a girl from a neighboring island or city or country or something and they choose them to be their wives like a worthy kind of title to be chosen and the main character's twin sister was chosen by a prince or Something along those lines, I think there's going to be some magical elements to it. Hopefully some mermaid action. I really hope so. I love mermaids. Favorite fantastical being. It already gives me kind of House of Salt and Sorrow vibes just based on the political aspects of it. So I really hope it delivers. I'm really excited for it. And I hate every single person who has an arc of this already. So... That's that on that. Also, um, I have not been giving dates for any of these. I am the worst. Beast of Frozen Sun comes out on August 7th, and then both Spinner of Dreams and Crown of Coral and Pearl comes out on August 27th. So hopefully that's the only mess up of this video. We'll see. So now we're gonna move into September, and we all know that September is a ginormous month for book releases, and that is the majority of the books I have on this list come out on September. So let's get into it. Again, carrying on the same theme, ocean-themed books. I have another one and that is The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrienne Young. This is the author of The Sky in the Deep, which I have not gotten to yet, but it has been on my TBR for a really long time. And it is another one where I don't know too much about. I think it's another political driven. It says on Goodreads that it's shelved as historical fiction as well. I don't know how much that is going to influence it, but if, if, if it is historical fiction, I'm even more excited about it. I don't know anything about this book. Do I even know any synopsises of any books I read, though? I can't even give synopsises of books that I have read, so I hope you guys don't hold me to a high standard because you really will be disappointed and you need to keep your standards low. The Girl the Sea Gave Back is about this main character and she has, like, runes. She has something to do with, like, runes and stuff so I assume it's gonna have some magical elements. It kind of sounds a little Norse inspired as well similar to A Sky in the Deep because that's Viking place so I don't know if this takes place in like Nordic countries but it sounds like it could. I know it has something to do with the sea. I know it has something to do with probably some magical elements to it so I'm excited. I'm thrilled. This is another one where I'm like, if you have an arc of this, I hate you and I would like you to give it to me now because I deserve it. This book actually comes out on September 3rd, so, so excited. I'm going to put a hold in my library immediately when it shows up. Another one that comes out on September 3rd is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Marin? Marine? Not sure. Don't know how to pronounce authors' names and I'm not a good enough booktuber to look it up. So this is what we have. This is what you're going to deal with and accept. Serpent and Dove is another historical fantasy and it takes place in France. And I also don't know a ton more than that. I know it has something to do with witches and it has the YA snake on the cover. And quite frankly, that's the only reason why I put it on my TBR. I didn't even read the synopsis. I was like, has a snake on the cover? my Slytherin ass needs it. 
added it and now I'm going to read it. There's been a ton of buzz around it so I'm sure you guys already know about it so I don't feel too bad about not knowing what it's about and quite frankly this is my channel and this is the books I'm gonna read and you shouldn't expect me to know what the book's about because I haven't read it and that's misinformation ladies and gentlemen and non-binary peeps. The final book that comes out on September 3rd is another one of my highly anticipated releases and it is one that has not fit the norm of the books I've talked about so far because it is a contemporary. I am an intellectual and I don't read just magical worlds all the time. Wow, a concept. I'm reading out of my comfort zone. We love that. This book is well met by Jen DeLuca uh, and this is one that I actually just got approved for last night for an arc through NetGalley so thank god because this is a renaissance fair contemporary romance and I love renaissance fairs. The renaissance is my favorite time period even more than ancient Greek. I know delete my channel. I don't know who I am anymore. Really excited for it. I just started it last night actually and so far it's pretty info dumpy but I'm only a few pages in so we're not going to judge anything quite yet. I have comes out September 10th and it has already gotten a ton of hype on booktube. I hadn't even heard of this book until a couple weeks ago when everybody started talking about it and I absolutely attribute 100% all of that hype to Melanie from Melton and Annie and Rhiannon from Crescent Moon Reads. Rhiannon is getting a tattoo of this book. That book is Gideon in the Ninth by Tamsin Mur Mur we're gonna ignore that. This has to do with lesbian necromancers. That's all I know. That's all I have to know. That's all you have to know. And that's that on that. The next book I have also comes out on September 10th and it is another contemporary. I don't know who I am. I don't know what's gotten into me. It's all of these beautiful illustrated covers that contemporaries come out with. I swear. I just want to read all of them. This book is Unpregnant by Jenny Hendricks. This follows a similar synopsis to Girls on the Verge that came out earlier this year as well. And this is a traveling road trip book where the main character it has to make a road trip in order to get an abortion in a, another state. As someone who has the potential to become pregnant and does not ever want that to happen, get that energy away from me. I really am interested in reading this. I really want to read Unpregnant and Girls on the Verge in the same week so I can maybe do a little comparison of them. I think Unpregnant is going to be a, li a little bit more humorous than Girls on the Verge from what I've heard from other people about it. Uh, but regardless, I'm really excited for it. I'm so excited that these books are getting written so much more now because it's stories that need to be told and I'm really excited to read them. My final list for September comes out on September 19th and that is Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. Again, say it with me, I don't know what this book is about but I do know that it is about witch doctors and that's all I know. That's all I need to know. I've never read about witch doctors. My great extent of witch doctor knowledge stems from Diablo and they're fucking badass in Diablo so I'm like let's go. Let's do it. I'm ready for some diverse fantasies and I'm really hoping this delivers. I know it's gonna deliver because the author is black herself so let's fucking go with these diverse fantasies. I'm so excited. All right guys, so we're moving on to October. This is the last month I have and the first book I have coming out in October comes out on October 1st. That is Crier's War by Nina Varela, something like that. This is another book that has gotten a ton of buzz on booktube. It's got a ton of buzz surrounding the anticipated release and from what I understand this is a Game of Thrones meets, meets Westworld kind of book so I know there's gonna be some sci-fi in there but before you attack me I think it's going to be okay because it seems to be like a fantastical world meets like 
automatons and still kind of in the fantasy realm just with some tech like technology which is what four day queens is and that's a five out of five stars for me so i still think i'm going to like this and even if i don't well that's more content for a rant review and all messy bitches love rant reviews so it's fine for me the next book i have i don't even need to say a single damn thing about it and that is ninth house by lee bardugo Quite frankly, I'm glad I don't have to say a single thing about it because I don't even know what this fucking genre is. Everybody was saying it's like contemporary, but then there's like magical elements in it. So it's like, no, it, it's fantasy, but then it's like secret history. So I'm like, is it gonna be literary fiction? I don't know what it's gonna be, but I'm excited for that because I think going into this book blind is gonna be super fun. I said it has similar like secret history vibes. So like, I think the main character goes to like Yale or something and uncover some secrets there. I don't need to convince you to put this book on your TBR. You have put this on your TBR as soon as it didn't even have a cover. As soon as it just had the name Lee Bardugo on Goodreads, you were like, yes, let's do it. So I don't need to convince you. I'm excited for this. Everybody's excited for it. Now, the next book. Top three anticipated releases. Hands down. And as soon as this book becomes available, I am reading it, even if that means I have to buy it because I am that committed to this book. If it fails, if this book sucks, I will legitimately cry in a hole for weeks on end because I'm so excited for it. And that is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. I cannot wait for vampires to come back. Like she just really reinvigorated the book community, didn't she? I am ready to give my entire soul for this woman and this book because not only is it a vampire book, but it's a diverse vampire book set in New Orleans. I'm sorry, the originals could never. <sighs> I'm so ready. I'm so ready. And The Beautiful comes out on October 8th. And if you didn't know that, now you know. We have reached the end of my most anticipated releases of the year with my number one most anticipated read of the year. You guys all know what it is. Hopefully you know what it is. If you don't, you should unsubscribe right now because I say it all the damn time. And that is Into the Crooked Place by Alexander Christo. I already have a video up on my channel reacting to the cover as well as the first chapter of the damn book. So that is fun. You should go watch that. I'm probably gonna make at least two more videos about it when it actually comes out so stay tuned for that but Alexander Cristo is the author of To Kill a Kingdom which you guys all know I'm gonna say it over and over again was my favorite read of 2018 I loved it so so much this is her second book I'm so excited about it it is kind of like Six of Crows-esque um I say that just because Six of Crows is just the generic term for like a group of morally gray criminals a city and there's an underground criminal activity going on and the main character is a lackey for this big heist kind of criminal lord kind of guy. You guys know where this is going. And the first chapter hints at a female female romance and I can't even tell you the emotions I had while reading that. I mean you can go see it. You can go actually watch my reactions when I saw that. It was a lot. I had a lot of feelings. I still have a lot of feelings and this is the number one book where I'm like if you have a damn arc of this I can't even describe my wrath, fury, and envy towards you. But I also love you and I hope you love this book and I hope you preach this book because I want this book to be successful, so it's fine. But regardless, Into the Crooked Place, number one most anticipated read of the year. I'm so excited for it. I'm so ready. Give it to me. Alexandra just, I just love her with my whole heart and soul. All right, you guys, so that is the end of this video. Those are all my most anticipated releases of the second half of the year. Please, please, please let me know what your most anticipated releases of the year are because I love adding books to my TBR and not reading them. These are my favorite videos to watch, so please give me all of the content I want and deserve. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!